How do you write comedy raps for comedy legends? That's what we'll be discussing in this episode of Behind the Scenes. We have this uh, Discord, part of the Discord is a writing writer's room, and that's part of the Patreon. And we went in there to talk about this idea that we thought was complete, which was George Carlin versus Richard Pryor, Bill Cosby comes in, Joan Rivers roofies Bill Cosby, and then it's Joan Rivers versus Richard Pryor and George Carlin. And she ends it. She and she ends it. it. And then all the people in the writer's room thing were like, what happens then? To them, it was obvious that Robin Williams was gonna come in, and we were sitting there like, uh, that's not the plan. Yeah. But okay. Good morning, movie bomb! Nice shoulder pads, sheep. I feel wiser in the silver and the gray. I feel like I know things that I, I don't actually know. For George Carlin's character, I found it in the posture. Mm -hmm. he, he's down, <laughs> you know, he's down here, and oh, man, the whole kind of thing in his wacky face. <laughs> Carlin's pretty simple. He's, he just wears a black crew neck t-shirt and dark jeans and really terrible shoes. The terrible shoes are the only thing that I was like, I need to make sure that I get like white old man-ish shoes. What I couldn't get is his after breath. Yeah. That's and he, so true. he does that in his stand up. Yeah. And that's how he punctuates his jokes. <laughs> I'm the original brother to give the scene some color. The most iconic stand up comic stand down, motherfucker. Yeah. Me and Richard Pryor was great. I think I embodied him pretty well. We got the stash, we got the fro. Got the shirts that glow. Ooh. It's your boy from Peoria, Illinois. One hand on my mic, one hand on my groin. Yeah. I go to an open mic in Hollywood, and if you guys ever are in Hollywood, it's called the Juice Joint. And I saw this guy, Zeal, and he's in this hip hop group called Black Lack. And I just went right up to him and I was like, I remember I texted you. I was oh, like, yeah. I found our. Yeah, I, I found Richard Pryor. Yeah, I found Richard Pryor. Give me that money, I'll boost it up. Juice it up, juice it up, juice it up. Juice it up, 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 juice it up. So we try to pick a specific thing. I thought it was Live at the Sunset Strip because in my mind that's the record that I had of prior. And then we were like, no, that suit looks gross and we want him to look cool. So we switched it out to that red poofiness. Look at his shoes. Those are nice shoes. Like I was like, oh, those are nice shoes. Payless. Payless. You believe it? I think my body got <laughs> <laughs> Gary Anthony Williams. Man, that dude was funny too. His list of credits, you can go on IMDb, they go on forever. He was so easy to oh work with. He came in with such joyful energy. It was like, I'm here to Bill Cosby, I'm gonna get poisoned, I'm gonna get hit over the head, I'm gonna fall on a mat, I'm gonna do all this stuff. He yeah. was great. I'm the greatest, and I boof, I boof, I boof. Something's going on with my lap, and it'll affect the nervous. Duo Dottenham system. Flabble, cobble, dabble, go. You heard this in your point. This. <laughs> so the sweater, that's kind of like the classic thing we wanted. And you know, I sent a picture, I was at Goodwill. I sent a picture to Morgan, a sweater that I thought it was excellent. I was like, I think this is gonna work. Doesn't even respond. He sometimes gets ideas in his head about uh, costuming and stuff. And he showed me a picture of a, a sweater that, uh, didn't look anything like a Cosby sweater. So four weeks later on shoot day, I say, hey, what about that sweater I emailed you about? And he was like, oh, that didn't work. It worked. He was trying to help out. I appreciate it. <laughs> this thing that was on my face. Right. I just got to go one, two, three. Ow! Oh, God. Oh, ripped some of my hair out. So it was strapped to my head and it was giving me an actual, it's taped here and Apparently, older women, older actresses, they use, they actually use these, and it's this little thing, and you put it in, and then when it's taped to your face, right, it like pulls your face up. And they think coal mining is hard. Yeah, that's right. Jackie Tone is on Glow on Netflix. So I was at a show in, again, in Hollywood at this place called Hotel Cafe. And I saw Jackie, like, she plays guitar and sings oh, funny she songs. sings so well. And finally, when we decided on the comedians, I was like, I think this is the, the perfect person to be cast as Joan. So she came in, like, super excited at, like, 9 a.m. And she maintained that for the entire day and in the studio too like she tracking was really her was like really fun and listen to her silky voice oh 
Oh, Carlin, my Carlin, what can I say about you to be having had a good shit since 1962? I got into being Robin Williams by immediately going back and watching his live from the Met stand-up routine. I got my lyrics here. And then I got some, I gotta keep listening to the voice of him. So I just started listening to him and just talking along like tote behind him and say the same things. Yeah, it's like I just clicked on four different spots on his stand up and it wasn't the same voice twice. I didn't realize how big of an influence he was on me. And then you look at yourself and you go, oh shit. I thought I was original. Nope, I was just Robin Williams. Left you running down the street like one of the things we had to deal with trying to recreate or emulate or make fun of the scene from Mrs. Doubtfire where he sticks his face in cake and then comes out of the fridge. Brittany, who does hair and makeup for us, has a side business of doing cakes and we only get one take with this. But once he's done that, it's all over his face, the cake's messed up, we're done. Then the second part of that is coming out of the cake. Now we can't recreate that with icing or whipped cream, so we use shaving cream. So many jokes getting left on the table right now. <laughs> About cream in your face? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Atul. <laughs> How come Pete never has to do any of this shit? <laughs> Hey you! What time is it? Patreon time! What? Patreon time! That's right, directors! We're three months in and it's time to ship out! We're stuffing your mailbox with our big purple envelopes! Yo! We got pins! We got tiny bags! We got pins and tiny bags! Little yellow paper clips! Signed postcards! Envelopes with stickers on them! And hold up! These stickers on the back of your envelope are stickable! 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 We here at the Epic Rap Battles of History would just like to take this. There's no time! Go to patreon.com slash ERB to find out you can get in on the goods! And now, back to your regularly scheduled behind the scenes video. What are you doing? Filming some assets uh, for the genie to come out of the lamp with some syrup and soap. We're gonna film it on the water. Okay, so what did we use the footage uh, of the inks in the water for? We wanted to use it for the genie lamp stuff. So yesterday we were filming the cylinder with the plastic underneath. That did not hold water. And so we went to the store and we bought this plastic container. And so now we're ready to go. I reversed it. Oh, the syrup is going up. Now I masked it to get the areas that I care about. And then I applied some effects to it so that it's just like blue. Some example of that being applied is like there. Surprisingly, it kind of works. You should get this, my video game. And then it's moving this up here. See the lens up there? This episode was unique because John was actually, our cinematographer was actually on another project that had taken up his entire week. So the first day, Andy had jumped in and he kind of stepped up and he was our DP for the first day. Andy Chin's normal credit is gaffer. Gaffer means lighting dude. Me and John uh, first talk about how the person's usually known for looking. They have like known images of themselves. So we try to match how the lighting looks on them and their most famous images. And we do that using film lights, which is all this stuff. Do you want to know, learn something? When you have receipts, what you need to do is you need to tape them down on all four sides. Sometimes Morgan drops the ball, like he does with receipts. Just gotta turn them in on eight and a half by 11 paper, Morgan. That's all it is. This receipts thing is getting out of hand. And in fact, I have a meeting with a tool after this to uh, talk about receipts. Like literally two grown people are gonna sit down and talk about receipts. Um, so that's a little disappointing. Yeah, yeah, tool, I bought a Diet Coke in 2016. Did you pull it up? <laughs> it depends on where you bought it. Uh, now see, that's a good question. Let's say you bought something in a vending machine. <laughs> 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 we have two producers on the beats for this song. The first two sections are by this producer named Tone Jones. I love Tone Jones because a lot of people, they use like saxophone sounds or bass sounds. I think he plays And he plays all these yeah, things. Yeah, you can feel it. But we were trying to figure out how to bring Robin Williams in and we couldn't find the right music. And as we often do, we reached out to Hollywood Legend Productions. And Hollywood! Checked it, and we found the perfect beat. But now I got the flubber flow. That'll get the club jumping. You got second hand raps. Found him good wheel. <laughs> Can somebody grab my drink off the prop table? <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, you guys, oh, we're here to talk about my uh, 
my little co-starring part in SEAL Team on CBS in the final episode of the season. Don't mention it. You guys know that this is like the least amount of like technical costuming that I had to do the entire season, right? Like I literally went shopping, I did it all in one day.